Hi everyone, we're back with pop-up story time. My name is Miss Leah with LJ Lessons and today's book is called Ada's Violin. It's written by Susan Hood and it's illustrated by Sally Warren Comfort. It's the story of the recycled orchestra of Paraguay. Here we go. Ada Rios grew up in a town made of trash. Every morning at dawn, Ada heard the first garbage trucks rumble and roll down the road to Cateora. Beep, beep, beep. Backing into the landfill, they tipped their loads up and up and crash. The trash came tumbling down 1,500 tons each day. Ada and her friends watched as the gancheros, or the recyclers, scrambled, tearing into plastic bags with long-handled hooks, pushing aside moldy produce, grabbing anything they could recycle or sell. The going rates? Five cents for a pound of cardboard, 10 cents for a pound of plastic. The noisy or this noisy, stinking, sweltering slum was not the most nurturing neighborhood. Ada watched eyes wide, but she didn't say much. And yet she liked to imagine each garbage truck was a box of surprises. One never knew what might be inside. Her father had found appliances, toys, perfumes, and antique watches. One woman even discovered a small box of gold jewelry. Little did Ada know, there was a bigger surprise waiting for her in the landfill. Every day when Ada's parents went to work, Grandmother Miriam cared for Ada and her little sister, Noalia. Grandma loved to sing rock and roll songs from the 1960s. The girls grew up to the tunes of the Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel, and Credence Clearwater Revival. Ada loved to sing too, but only when no one was listening. Ada's dad brightened the night with stories and songs of great musicians. He turned up the radio and pointed out the sounds each instrument made. Ada heard one above all others. Zing went the strings of the violin. When the girls started school, Grandma returned to work as a recycler, collecting bottles and cans in the city. Classes let out at noon. Young Ada was in charge of Noelia until her parents were done with work. At first, the girls stayed close to home, playing with Grandma Miriam's doggies and making sand cakes in the dirt. Soon they joined their cousins playing hide and seek or a game of handball in the streets. In the time they ventured, or in time, they ventured farther afield, walking down to the bodega to get candy. But Ada noticed the teenagers hanging out in the alleys, grumbling about life in the landfill looming ahead. What would happen to them, to her, to her little sister? She watched as the older kids turned to gangs and got into fights. One day, when Ada was 11 years old, her grandmother saw a sign posted on the wall of a chapel. Violin, guitar, cello, taught Saturdays at 8 a.m. Fabio Chavez. How grandma had longed to learn music. Too late for her, maybe, she thought, but not for her granddaughters. She signed them up without asking them or their parents. Ada's heart sang out thanks to her abuela. She could leave her worries behind and learn to play. At the first class, the teacher, Fabio Chavez, had three guitars and two violins to share. Ada chose violin right away, but 10 children had signed up. Frustrated, Ada and her friends found that there were not enough instruments to go around.
And there was a bigger problem. Everyone quickly, quickly realized that the children would need to practice at home, but it wasn't safe to be seen with an expensive instrument in Kateora, where a violin is worth more than a house. Watching the children play amid broken glass and rusty metal, Senor Chavez knew he had to do something. He remembered a band called Les Luthiers that made its own instruments. That was it. He asked Nicolas Cola Gomez, a ganchero and carpenter, carpenter for help. Senor Gomez found a discarded drum with a big hole in it. What could he use to fix it? He picked through the trash and discovered an old x-ray film. Would that work? It did. Senor Gomez kept experimenting and others like Tito Romero helped. Inventing instruments wasn't easy, but they fiddled around discovering which materials hit just the right notes. They transformed oil drums into cellos, water pipes into flutes, and packing crates into guitars. Soon there were enough instruments for all the children who wanted to play. Ada chose a violin made from an old paint can, an aluminum baking tray, a fork, and pieces of wooden crates. Worthless to thieves, it was invaluable to her. It was a violin of her very own. Senor Chavez set up a strict schedule of three hour lessons. The class had no classroom, so they played outside despite the 100 degree heat and sudden downpours. At first, Ada and the others struggled. Sharps and flasks clashed, clanged and clashed. Playing an instrument is a process. It doesn't matter if one is rich or poor, ugly, fat, thin. You cannot learn to play an instrument overnight, Senor Chavez told the children. Some kids decided it was too much work and gave up, but not for Ada. After lessons, she would practice at home, sometimes two hours a day. In time, the screeches, twangs, and tweets hit all the right notes. Their class became a small island where Chavez taught them to respect themselves and one another. Be kind, always say please and thank you, say you're sorry, be dedicated when you commit to something, Senor Chavez told the children. Soon, the ragtag crew of kids learned to tune in, to listen to one another, to band together. The recycled orchestra was born. From then on, there was something new in the air in Cateora. Gancheros trudging home from the landfill might lift their heads to hear the sounds of Ada's violin, or the strains of Bebe's cello, or the strum of Noelia's guitar. A symphony of sound helped to lift them beyond the heat, the stench, and their aching backs. With her violin, Ada could close her eyes and imagine a different life. She could soar on the high, bright, bittersweet notes to play a place or to a place far away. She could be who she was meant to be. As Ada's skills grew, so did her confidence. Once timid, she now took center stage playing solos. She helped teach the younger children too. Her teachers and fellow students took note. When she was 12 years old, Ada was named a first violinist. Imagine, she was first at something. Shortly after, she and her 39 fellow musicians were invited to perform concerts in Cateora and later in the nearby capital city of Asuncion. Word of this extraordinary orchestra spread. Soon they were asked to perform in other cities and even other countries.
Ada and her friends flew on their first airplane, stayed in their first hotel, swam in the bright blue waters of Rio de Janeiro, sampled their first pastries and pineapple, and saw sights they never imagined. The world dazzled them, just as they dazzled the world. When Ada was 16, the orchestra received a very special invitation. They were asked to tour with a world-famous rock band. More than 35,000 people awaited them at their first concert stop in, Bog in Bogota, Colombia. Ada was more than nervous. She didn't know how to enter or how to greet the audience. She went blank. She saw a giant stage with glaring lights and heard people screaming. But she didn't have to worry. As the recycled orchestra took the stage, the people who had paid to see the rock band cheered for them. The enormous audience sang and swayed to the music as the orchestra played. And as their performance came to a close, a crescendo of cheers, chants, and applause resounded across the park. The astonished kids bowed, grinning at one another. They had discovered the surprise waiting in the landfill. Buried in the trash was music, and buried in themselves was something to be proud of. The end. And that was the story, Ada's Violin, the story of the recycled orchestra in Paraguay, or of Paraguay, written by Susan Hood, illustrated by Sally Wern Comport. I hope you enjoyed this book and I will see you at our next pop-up story time.